Hi Flosstube, it's Stephanie with Kate's Crafts and I am back for another Flosstube and I apologize that my videos have been a bit sporadic since April. I did have my Frogwarts unboxing but I have had some health issues and life stuff that I'm working through so appreciate your patience and your grace. Um, so and welcome, I've had some new subscribers over the last month and I've had um, uh, you know, some people reach out to me on Instagram. So thank you very much and welcome. And if you're returning, thank you for coming back. And hopefully you liked today's video. It is early morning here. I'm trying to get a, a floss tube in before work. So I have a busy week. And uh, so I'm not going to go through all kinds of haul because haul for the last three months would be too long for anyone. Um, uh, so I have a couple finishes. I have a couple new starts and I have some whips and then we'll talk about plans at the end. Uh, as I said, I go by Cade's Crafts here on FlossTube, um, but also on Instagram as well. So if you don't follow me there, I would love to have you follow me and I'll give you a follow back. And uh, yeah, so let's dive in. Okay, um, my first finish is called um, the Tiki Room. And I think most of you who have watched my channel before know that I am a big Disney fan and definitely a big uh, fan of the Tiki Room. And this chart, uh, I did get off of Etsy. I think I went back to look at it and it wasn't available. I, I have to be sure. So I will go look up who I bought it from and I will put it down in the comments below. Or um, if I can't find it, you can try and read it and it's not there and I forget to put it. Send me a message or make a comment and I can let you know who it's from. But um, so the Enchanted, Enchanted Tiki Room is, like I said, one of my favorite attractions. It has the four birds that uh, sing and talk. And that is um, Jose, Michael, Pierre, and Fritz. So the only thing I did do some charting on this. Um, so a good Disney uh, Tiki Room fanatic would know that there are five Tikis in the Tiki 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 Room. And this chart um, was charted differently. So it said, um, I think in the Flowers Croon was the second line. And then in the, and they only had three Tikis, Tiki 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 Room. And that, I love the chart. It was really cute, but that was just not sitting right with me. And obviously I had everything. Luckily, luckily, I was able to extend the second line of text kind of under the birds. And it, I think it still kind of works. Uh, the eyes are crunch knots, which by my first little time doing that, I drew it as a close. All the birds sing words and the flowers croon in the tiki 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 room. And I believe this is just a piece of 18 count Ada from like Joanne or Michaels. Um, I think Michaels like not ironed, sorry. Um, but I thought it came out really cute. So it was finish number one. Finish number two is, um, so Michelle Bendy Stitchy had, for her whip go, she was doing, um, I think, kick go. And so she had picked um, some, Flossy friends, Stitchy friends, to pick out charts during certain months. And in June, I she picked my name. So we stitched a chart that I got for her. And I want to say this is from Atomic Tiki, Atomic Tiki Stitch. I will also put the name of that below. It is uh, called Diamond Head. And I stitched this on 32 count linen from Be Stitch Me in the colorway Sleep which was the December 2020 fabric of the month. Um, it's small, but it has like 28 colors. <laughs> so it was uh, a lot involved. And the, the somewhat easiest part you would think would be the sky, but between the sky and the clouds, I made a mistake somewhere and fudged it and just kind of rage stitched it because I'm like, after I got through all the other confetti, this just should not be that hard. So. The sky is almost the exact same color as the fabric, um, but that is full coverage in the circle. 
And that is Diamond Head on Oahu. Um, since Michelle and I both have ties back to Hawaii and you don't have that view anymore with the flowers. Um, there's all hotels and stuff there, but it looks, it's so nice to remember what it used to look like in pictures. So uh, yeah, that was a fun little stitch. Is that um, took longer than I thought it would just given the color changes, but she has got some really great patterns. If you're into Disney, she's a Jungle Cruise backside of water. That's like the same size that I bought. Um, I think Erin Two Martini Stitcher and I may stitch that one together, um, but I'm stitching that one. And then she has a little Hula Girl and she had also done, this is the same fabric I stitched my Dual Whip on. And so I, I need to, I'm going to use this fabric for a lot of these. So that was finish number two. And Michelle and I are actually going to trade stitches. So I need to send her mine and she sent me hers and then we can finish them however we want and just have something that the other person stitched. So, all right. My third finish, uh, the last finish I have is from Frogwarts. Um, so I'm going to use this as kind of a tie-in from finish to whips and um, a Frogwarts retreat update. So I participate in the Frogwarts retreats hosted by the Black Needle Society, and they did a great job running it this year. It was crazy as ever um, and bigger than ever, which, you know, I think made the chat rooms a little crazier than ever, but it was still a great time. And it's just, I feel like it's getting a little bit more competitive every year. And I think that's okay. Although I don't know how we're going to make it through seven years of competitive like that. But the challenge always is that two weeks before the retreat, um, Katie, Laura, and Athena will release a password. And if you post the password and with your start for that year's pattern and you finish it by Sunday of the retreat, so you have like a full two weeks to finish it, you get extra 100 house points. Year two, I did not make it. I tried. I tried. I did not make it. This year, I made it. I planned better. And uh, I was more focused with what I stitched, how I stitched it. Um, but I also was able to make some changes to the pattern by starting it early and not being as stressed. Um, sorry, just a little fuzzy in my eye. Um, I was able to swap in some of 12 and make subtle changes to colors that I wouldn't have done if I was still trying to cram it all through during the retreat. So I learned that during year two. So I'll show you my finish on year three and then I'll talk a little bit about, more about the retreat. So here is my finish and I will bring it up close, but um, the fabric, I'm calling it a Jennifer fabric because my stitchy friend Jennifer, who is Frog Stitcher on Instagram, I let me raid her stash and I bought some fabric off of her and this was an unlabeled 36 count, but this 36 count is tighter than the 36 count I stitched on last year. So this year's is slightly smaller. I don't know if that's just the fabric dyer or if this maybe isn't 36 count. <laughs> I haven't measured stitch by stitch. So, um, but I will just do a pan through here. And if I made any changes to the original pattern, I'll let you know. So we start with the night bus. Uh, I stitched the inside and the headlamps all in a twall. And I know with my lighting this morning, you're probably not going to see a lot of sparkles. So, um, Ridiculous is the spell. I also stitched with um, one thread of called for plus one strand of a twelve, uh, and I'm doing that on all my spells. And then uh, Monster Book of Monsters, I did the eyes in a twelve. The footprints I did with one strand of regular Courant and one strand of red a twelve. And then you got Aunt Marge. I did change up her green, one of the greens. So there's, you can see, there's like two colors of green here around the edge of her dress. And my two fancy plus colors were basically exactly the same. So I went into my stash and I just pulled out another green. I don't, I have it in my bag still. I don't remember what it was. It doesn't really matter. Depending on what your um, floss 
colors looked like, you may not have had that situation. And obviously, if you're doing DMC, you wouldn't have had that situation. This is the Time Turner. And I stitched that almost all in satin and etoile. So that one is a little bit lighter than the way it was called for. Um, the Moon is white etoile. Lupin is, uh, he's done in Forbidden Fiber Bark because my old purple paint was really purple. So I wanted him to be more brownish and I had my bark from uh, Forbidden Fiber Company. I want to say it was their Halloween box last year. It seemed to be perfect and I really like how that came out. Um, sorry, this is a little long to hold. And then the Dementor, you can kind of, there you can see the color differentiation. So there's Courant Midnight and the uh, Witching Hour, as well as some old purple paint there. Um, my my Courant is really red. Like it's Aunt Marge's shoes red. My lighting is bad, I'm sorry. Um, so instead of having a red Dementor, I used 154, which is the DMC. For that and so I have a purple and then I instead of the midnight blue which was brighter blue for me I used um, blacksmith blue by classic color works so just kind of dulled it down a little bit and made it blend in a little better um Spectre patronum I also put a toile in with that and then my stag I converted all to a toile so I have a dark blue a toile a medium blue a toile and then that lighter blue um what is or white is actually one strand of light blue etoile with one strand of um, white etoile. White etoile with light blue etoile. Uh, so it's two strands. I don't know. I think, uh, I think you can see this part a little bit. I love how the stag came out. And then we have scabbers. And then we have the grim in our teacup. And the teacup um, was the last thing I stitched. And I'll be honest, at that point, I was like, I'm not stitching a white teacup. It is white on the chart. I didn't want to deal with white. So what I did was um, from the books, Trelawney says to Neville, um, she predicts that he's going to break his teacup for reading tea leaves. And she says to him, if you can pick a blue teacup, my dear, I'm rather attached to the pink. So I pulled out, this is um, Primrose from I think Classic Color Works. Um, might be general arts, but it's primrose, and I stitched the mug in that, and then I used the white just as kind of like the lip inside, and then I kept the inside with the chocolate cream pie, and then I used 3371 etoile for all of the tea dregs, so again, I don't know if you're seeing that, but it does have a little sparkle in real life. And then we have our quote along the bottom, I solemnly swear I'm up to no good. Mischief managed. So that is year three. Um, that's my finish. Yay! I'm so happy to finish that during the retreat. Um, so I stitched on that piece for most of the prompts. I also stitched on year one. Now, year one, I started this in early April. I think you guys saw some updates on it, maybe in my last boss tube. But I think when you saw it last time, I was basically like here. Uh, the only thing I have left is to fill in the mirror here with white etoile and then to finish the diamonds at the bottom and then the last um, eyelets. And everything else is done. I didn't make as many changes to this one. I did add etoile in places. I'm not going to go through all that. But um, the mirror is the biggest change I made, and that is stitched in DMC satin. And then I swapped in different etoile colors, so it's a little bit different than the way the uh, chart calls it out. So that is your one, and this will go away, and I will save this to finish for your four stitching challenges, because this is pretty much solid stitching. So yay for that. Happy with that progress. Uh, I stitched that piece and basically... I mean, not monogamously, but I stitched that, like I said, probably in four or five stitching sessions between April and the retreat. And then I just did the diamonds. So 
I stitched, I only had like probably this much of the diamonds done when I started the retreat. So I used that portion, stitched all the red, and then went back and started in with the blue. That is Hogwarts. Um, I did participate in all the challenges except for two. And um, I did play Quidditch. And I had no other finishes during the retreat. So I didn't learn any other points from finishing anything. And I was able to score enough points to be the Gryffindor MVP. So that was super exciting. I was not expecting that at all. Um, but, it, you know, I know a lot of people are gearing up, like, should I be strategic and hold finishes? And should I of other pieces and do this and that? And I'm just, just be part of the retreat. Participate as much as you can. Yes, it's competitive. Uh, yes, I typically get anywhere from 250 to 300 stitches an hour. Um, I am by far not the fastest stitcher. Uh, there are a lot of folks who stitch faster than me, but, you know, I had a great time and, uh, you know, I am looking forward to seeing the changes for next year because next year there's, right, there's no Quidditch in the move, in the book. We have the Triwizard Tournament. We have Beau Bat, uh, and uh, Durmstrang come in. Characters start being different. Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. So I'm interested to see how it's going to grow year over year and I can't see what wait to see what they come up with. So, and I did want to call out my pen pal. Um, this year they had a pen pal program. So those of us who had participated before were assigned a first year who, someone who was joining the retreat for the first year. And uh, I met a new city friend. Uh, we haven't met in person, of course, but um, Jen Hawks girl on uh, Instagram, she's a super sweetheart. And it was so nice stitching with her uh, throughout the retreat. And, um, you know, just chatting with our group, our Gryffindor Transfiguration uh, group was a great group and we all got along really well and uh, it made the retreat really fun. So thanks to all the Gryffindor Transfiguration ladies out there. Um, all right, so Frog Wars, your home was my first whip. Um, the last time I filmed, this was a new start, Spring Awakens by Summerhouse Stitchworks. And I just had a little bit of the pink, and this is where I am now. So all the pink is done. All the tan, no. I have this row of blue, another row of tan, and then the outer border in blue. And then I have to finish this part of the blue border up here. But the tan and the pink are completely filled in. And this is one over one tent on 40 count. It's a color and cotton uh, grab bag piece uh, that is like a baby pink color. It's just slightly pink. Um, yeah, so I've made a lot of progress with that. I'm also stitching that with uh, Jennifer uh, Frog Stitcher. And I believe in Erin to Martini Stitcher also started hers. I think she's doing hers monochromatically though. But um, I have not bought or started the summer one yet. And I still have the winter one as well. I'll be interested at Expo if the fall one is coming out. So hopefully we have the whole set. And then I can stitch all those. So. Another piece I worked on was my Henna Mandala by Ink Circles. Made quite a bit of progress on this one. So I have the three corners. I think that's, yeah, no. I lied. That's almost the corner. That's like this edge. I still have this little pointed motif down here. It's almost to the corner. And I want to say this is like 65% complete. Um, somewhere around there. So still have a little bit of work to do on this one, but uh, I still like how it's coming out. It is on the Stitch Me fabric in the colorway, I believe, Dune. And I am stitching with a sulky bundable and the colorway caramel apple. So that's just one, one thread. And I'm stitching that as a gift and it's woefully late. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that or not. All right. 
then I think I worked a little bit on this one. Um, this is definitely going to be in plans, but this is Leilani, my Nora Corbett piece. Um, I'm stitching this on 32 count vintage Tiffany. And I started down here with the bottom part of the skirt. I really hope I can get into the beading soon. I don't, I just have the bottom part of her skirt to finish stitching. Um, but I think it goes down for like, there's section one, section two, and I want to see there's a third section. Um, but I started out a blend in place piece that has a bunch of stitching or uh, beading on it. And I really want to try the beading on this first before I get into that piece that has a lot more beading. So this is the piece that I stitch on for Pam, Stitching in the Land of Good Enough. And she's the, also the owner of Stitch New England. She has a fancy folk stitching group on the fourth Thursday of the month. I'm not sure that if it has openings right now, but uh, since that stitching, that stitching meetup is going to be this week. I am going to probably hopefully work on that a little bit there. All right. I think for whips. Oh, then I have my my big guy here. So this is my focus piece of the year. This is my Haid. It's mini white magnolia. It is the art is by Marianne Broom and it's charted by Michelle with Heaven Earth Designs. I'm stitching this on 25 count Easy Grid Lugana from Charting Creations. And uh, I'm just stitching with the call for DMC. Now I am starting to convert. I had stitched a page and then I was just working in my threads. Um, and then I decided I wanted to try and work all the way across the top, other top corner. So I had a lot of confetti. Then I decided I wanted to start diagonal stitching. So I started at the upper right corner and worked my way back, like four diagonals. And then now I'm converting it to the Royal Rose, which is, um, I guess, started by Allison Royal. She has a Facebook group. Uh, it's basically working in um, two 10 by 10 blocks vertically. So 10 across, 20 high, and working your way across and then filling in that way. Uh, it involves a lot more parking than I've been doing. So there's a lot of threads here. So I will kind of, this is my progress. So this was page one that I had finished right when I started. Then I worked across. I don't know if you guys saw the diagonal stitching here, but I started working back. And now I'm really just trying to fill all this in. I do have almost all of this part. So this whole chunk here, I've filled in with the Royal Row method. And then I'm almost done with the top two rows. So this is my piece for Full Coverage Fanatics. Um, for 22,000 stitches in 2022. I'm also using this for uh, biking around Germany. And I generally use this as my semi-sane focus piece challenge as well, although I did not upload this month. So don't get any credit for that. I am about um, 7,000 stitches in for the year. I have some work to do. Uh, I think I calculated it out. And if I want to hit the Germany, I need to basically take from right here and go all the way across and like fill all of this in. I don't know if I can do it. So we will see, but I'm going to try. And uh, I'm also going to use this as my focus piece. Uh, um, Aaron, Michelle, and um, Alicia. I'm blinking, it's too early, no coffee yet. Uh, from Resist Stitch, and they're going to be doing their um, charity 100 hours again in, I believe, September and October. Uh, I need to confirm that if it's August and September or September and October. But I am going to try and stitch 100 hours on this as well during that time and raise some money for their charity choice this year. More information is going to be coming out soon. But um, I'm hoping to use that focus as well on that. And I just checked, and this did get called for my August whip go. So I will definitely be putting time in that. So, all right. So that's it for my whips. I do have a couple new starts. So I did start the last day of uh, April. I started a new Ink Circles design because um, Ink Circles was the Garon uh, Artist of the Month. 
for April. So I started Tangled Fire, which came out during market. I got this from Stitching and Lana Good Enough from Pam, and I got it with the sulky pack that this is called for. Oh, this is called for to be stitched on 32 count sunflower fields linen by Seraphim. I did not, I was not able to find that. I went down to Craft Gallery in Ohio. They had something very similar, but it was by Pictures Plus. And when I got it back and started stitching with it, I'll be honest, I hated the sulky coverage of one strand on 32 count. Either Seraphim is tight or I don't know how they got this coverage because mine looks so sparse. Um, I also didn't like the texture of the PPP. That was my first time stitching with it, I think, and was not a fan, but I think it may have been more that piece than anything else. So I had also received a coloring cotton grab bag, or um, there was a coloring cotton ready to ship like fabric available along with grab bags. And I had ordered this as a, um, a fat quarter. And uh, this is my start on it. So I think it looks great. Uh, this is 36 count, I'm much happier with the coverage, I'm much happier, I mean the color, th this fabric is not as modeled. It matches the color in the call for, but it doesn't have the modeling. So, you know, it's staying true in that way, but it's not It's not as modeled, but I'm, I'm okay with that. I think this came at the right time. It literally came in the mail as I was getting frustrated with the PPP. I looked down, I'm like, done, start on this. I didn't want to have to go back to an LNS to try and find what I wanted. Um, I just wanted to get started on it. Now, the reason I started it at the end of the month, because of it was the Garon Focus month. And then on the other side, uh, it was May, was Mental Health May. And that was kind of co-hosted or owned by the Candy, the 614 Stitcher. She, you should also check her out. She's um, really funny to watch. She's great. She just seems such like such an amazing, nice person. Um, but she had a lot of tips on mental health in May and had a great series. And I stitched on this. Um, I thought it was very fitting because sometimes my brain is like tangled fire when I'm dealing with mental health issues. It spoke to me. So this is uh, that piece for me. All right. My next new start was, um, I have this in my Garon bag, which is so fitting for what's in this project. And I got this shirt from Garon after seeing Gary stitch it. And this one is Then in Place Woodland Wonder. If any of you have seen Gary's, his finished one on the wall is like amazing. Love it so much. And um, this is called To Be Stitched on Earthen by Picture This Plus. And when I was up at my LNS uh, Stitches and Things in Fenton, Michigan, um, they also have a great online shop. Uh, the earthen was really like earthen. It was like clay, really dark um, for that particular piece. And it just didn't want to get like looked as good. So, um, what am I stitching this on? I'm stitching it on vellum, which I believe, believe is also a picture of this plus. It doesn't say on here. But it's 32 count vellum, and so it's a little bit lighter. It's got a little bit of green undertones in it, which I think actually is going to pick up the green in the trees really well. And Erin Tumartini Stitcher and I are started this together in June. I was going to stitch on this during Frogworts because one of the last challenges was to stick stitch on a piece with a deer or a doe, which is why I wanted to start it ahead. However, we got to that challenge. It was like middle of the day on Sunday and my brain was just like, um, so I took penalty stitches and stitched year one because I didn't have to think about the pattern. This obviously takes a little bit more thinking. So I've got the whole top border done. And then I'm getting into the first tree. And I'm just stitching this with the called for DMC. Uh, I do have the Krynik and the beads um, and the petite. Um, I think the blending filament, I was switching out on the white snowflakes with petite treasure braid. But other than that, I'm stitching it as called for. So 
So, um, and I think they st they call it 28 count. I'm doing 32. But I think the beads should still fit just fine. So, can't wait to keep working on that one. The blend in place is the September focus, designer focus. So that will be when I pull this back out. So just in another month. And isn't that bad? Like perfect to go with that chart. The green and the stag and everything. Love it. And I have one last new start, and that is uh, a round robin that my friend, some of my friends and I are doing. There's five of us, and we're doing, it's called um, Sarah Spencer by Hands Across the Sea. And I have a picture of it here. Watch my screen. So this is, it's one of her little gems. So you can see that. So we're all stitching the border ourselves, and then we're going to break up the elements inside to stitch around with each other as we swap it around. So uh, the goal right now is to focus on the border. And I am stitching this on a uh, Be Stitch Me um, Friday Night Fight Night, so it doesn't have a name. It is 20 count Ada. And I have the first, oops, sorry. I have the first side of the border done. So this is the left side. Well, it's not done completely. I have to finish a couple flowers, but the green part's all done. So this is how tall it'll be. And it won't go the whole way across, but. Um, I think, I think it looks great. I have swapped it out. It's mostly like reds and pinks and I've swapped it out for purples more so with the yellows and the blues on the flowers and so I've done some conversions there um, just because I like purple more than that coral red uh, but I think that's going to look all right and I think most of my stuff is um, I think my purple is the dinky dyes most everything else is color and cotton or classic color works colors swapped in. Um, I think I do have one brandy be stitch me silk in there so it's kind of a hodgepodge but I think it's going to be fine. And uh, so we're all working on our borders and like I said that'll be going around um, either at the end of this year or going into next year. So those are my three new starts. Hey, I'm not, I mean I had three finishes and three starts so I guess I'm net zero for this costume <laughs> but I am not zero for the year. So I still need some more finishes. I need to get some things done. So um, one of the other things I did right after I filmed my last video is I did take a trip to Keepsakes and I was there on a Friday and uh, Steph and uh, Barbara, the owner, um, Steph from Just Keep Stitching was super helpful trying to help me find some fabric for Frogworts. And it was really nice to meet them in person and check out the shop. It's um, just jam-packed full and I, worth a stop. If you're in the Cincinnati area, definitely worth a stop. Um, and then there were a couple folks stitching there. One in particular was Jen. And Jen is part of, she's half of Stitchy Friends. So it's Jen and Sarah. And you should check them out under Stitchy Friends on Instagram. And they still have their individual channels, but they, they do post their floss tube videos and on Instagram together. And they had some great recap, recap videos from StitchCon and um, they're just super fun to watch and super sweet. So um, it was really nice to meet Jen in person. I hope I get to go back and have some time to sit and stitch with some folks there in the future. And it was just a great shop to visit. So thanks for being so welcoming ladies. Um, my WIPGO status is, I'm actually not doing too bad. I think I have, well, they've called through August, so obviously I haven't started August, but through July, that's what 15 squares have been called because they do call the center square. And I think I only have three that are not yet done. Maybe three, maybe four. So I'm trying to get caught up on WIPCO, but I'm not doing too bad, um, which is surprising because I feel like I'm behind. But I think that's just because I've had so many new starts 
and not as many finishes, then I feel like I'm not making as much progress. So we'll see where that goes. Uh, so my mini white magnolia is a focus for this month, uh, as well as my um, Harry Potter book covers is also a focus for August. So those will be my two focus pieces for sure. And they're both big full coverage pieces. So hopefully I can just get a bunch of stitching done on them. Um, August designer focus is Bent Creek. I don't have any Bent Creek. And with the number of whips I have, I just really don't want to buy any more whips. Um, like that gun in place I did buy specifically for September because I love that piece, but none of the Bent Creek are calling out to me to the point where I want to have another whip. So I have a bunch of stuff kitted up as future starts. And if a designer comes up that I already have something kitted, great. But at this point, I'm going to try and limit my purchases and not buy something just to start it. So see how it goes there. Um, I'm even contemplating, I don't want to say no new starts for next year. I kind of want to say no new starts, but definitely I shouldn't be buying things because I have stuff kitted up and ready to go. I have like, I think 20 charts or 25 charts ready, kitted and ready to go that I haven't started yet. So I should be pulling from those first, but do as I say, not as I do. Um, I'll have to see how I get into plans for next year on that one. Um, and then also in a couple weeks, I'm gonna be visiting Cape May, New Jersey again, and I'm gonna go stop by Stitch by Stitch again. I uh, was able to stop in there briefly last year, hoping to, you know, stop in there a little bit more. That was really almost like my first or second time in an LNS, and it was kind of like overwhelming. They have a lot of cross stitch, but they also have a lot of needlepoint canvases on the wall. Uh, but they were extremely helpful and very nice. So um, hoping to make a quick stop in there as well. But that's about it. Uh, you know, like I said, uh, August, the summer's evaporated. It's gone by so fast. Um, you know, we've, uh, we've had camps and my son went to a Boy Scout camp. It was his first sleepaway camp. That was exciting. And we've got about three weeks before we start school. So summer is basically like over <laughs> and, uh, I'm trying to enjoy every last bit I can. I definitely will be getting some stitching in, but want to enjoy that as well. And also hoping to make it down to Riverview Stitching. Uh, um, owners uh, are the designers of the Ori TM, and they open that uh, just south of Detroit, and it is not too far from us at all. So my friend Jennifer and I were hoping to make a trip down there and visit another LNS, and um, yeah, so and then the back to school craziness starts, and we'll see what happens with our schedules then. <laughs> but. Thank you guys all for watching. It's been great chatting with you. I hope you're all doing well and staying healthy. Um, you know, if you, like I said, if you're not following me on Instagram, please come check me out on there. I'm going to get better about posting there as well. Uh, summer is just really hard for me, social media. Like I haven't posted on Facebook, I think since April. I just try not to be on my phone that much. So uh, other than that, like I said, take care and hopefully I'll see you guys real soon. So. Thanks again. Bye.